Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as me and you are truly interested and possibly even excited about learning more about them. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 7.2 competence. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 7.2 wants us to do. First off, the clause states that the organization shall A, determine the necessary competence of workers that affects or can affect its OH&S performance, and B, ensure that workers are competent, including the ability to identify hazards on the basis of appropriate education, training, or experience. That's right, it's up to the organization to figure out what competence requirements are needed for the different roles relevant to the OH&S management system. You normally see what these competence requirements are by being documented in position descriptions or job descriptions. They could also be included in a training matrix or register. These requirements should be based on appropriate education or training requirements, which could be licenses, tickets, certifications, or certificate level training through to degree level. These could also include on the job training requirements. These will be determined by legal requirements, which you'll identify as part of clause 613, industry requirements, and your own business requirements. As well as education and training, there may also be experience requirements that could be what the person comes to you with, or it could mean that there is an element of on-the-job training to be completed before they are marked off as competent. The unique requirement for OH&S with regards to competence is that this competence includes hazard identification, as well as anything else determined by the organization as a requirement. Then this clause moves on to C, which states that the organization shall, where applicable, take actions to acquire and maintain the necessary competence and evaluate the effectiveness of the actions taken. The note at the end of this clause actually states that Applicable actions can include, for example, the provision of training to, the mentoring of, or the reassignment of currently employed persons, or the hiring or contracting of competent persons. So now that you have established the competence requirements, whether it be by education, training, or experience individually or altogether, you can still consider taking on board people to the business with some shortfalls to the competence requirements. However, you need to make sure that actions are taken to complete training, further study, or on the job training or experience in tasks, which could also include mentoring from another person within the business. Then finally, D states that the organization is to retain appropriate documented information as evidence of competence. So any competence requirements that have been determined, you need to ensure that you have evidence that they have been achieved. So if you say that a diploma or a license or both are required for a particular job, ensure that you have collected and saved the documentation to prove that this has been met. If you also state that on the job training is required, ensure that there is a record of this as well. To summarize these clause requirements, an organization needs to, one, figure out what competence requirements are needed, 
base this on legal and industry education and training requirements, as well as on the job. Two, make sure that these competence requirements are met, even if the organisation has to support some actions to make sure they are achieved. Three, retain evidence that these competence requirements have actually been met by keeping a record of training completed, certificates gained, licenses, as well as on the job training records. Something that isn't stated explicitly in this clause is the requirement to involve non-managerial workers in determining competence requirements, training needs, training and evaluating of the training. This is stated in clause 5.4 consultation and participation and does refer directly to this clause 7.2. So when you are working through these requirements, ensure that you include workers throughout each process. It's pretty simple once you break it down like that. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognised training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enrol in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognised qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.